Hi and welcome to this DCP web HTML5 and CSS beginners tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to look at the CSS positioning element. So let's open up our web browser and we'll also open up Notepad++. Let's drag that here and we'll go to our code and we'll drag in the HTML here so we can see what we did before. We'll drag it into Notepad++ so you only need to do that if you don't already see your code here and we'll drag in the CSS as well. Okay, we're good to go. So in the previous tutorial, we used something called the float, if you remember, the float element to position this particular image and these columns. And sometimes in web development, we want to really be very specific where an image is actually positioned. So this image will actually move position based on the screen size because it's floating yeah but what if we wanted that picture to sit in the left hand corner here but never move regardless of the size of the screen so if we look at our code let's just remind ourselves we've got a class called sun image position so in here we can see the sun image position class and we're going to delete this float and padding so let's just delete that save it we'll save it Control s to save or click on this little save icon here and refresh now our image is relative it's in its exact position where it's where it would, where it would normally belong if there was no css applied to it because it sits right here it sits just underneath the h1 tag and there's the image and then there's the intro text that we created so that is its actual relative position that's its correct location without any css affecting it so if we wrote in here position position of this element is relative so what that is saying is the position is is where it where it would be if no css was applied to it so this is relevant logical position let's call it that way yeah? and if we said it's that's that's the position that we want it to be but we want it to be left 100 or well, let's just do 200 pixels so it's going to push this image so when we refresh it the image moves it's, what's a bit strange here is that you've written left here 200 pixels and it's moved to the right So it's really increasing the spacing on the left hand side of the image. You can think of it that way So it's moving into this position. So if I were to set this to something like right 200 uh, Let's spell it right R -G -H -T, Then it's almost off the screen So it seems a bit strange. Let's put actually one more pixel. Let's make it 210 now it's completely off the screen. So the image does exist in the HTML code, but it's off the screen. So you may ask me, why would you ever put an image off of the screen? It doesn't make no sense, right? But imagine if we wanted to write some JavaScript code. So later in future tutorials, we'll look at JavaScript. And with JavaScript, we could write some code that says, change this right position to 209, to 208, to 207, 206, 205. And it will be moving the image pixel by pixel and it will move it across the screen so we can do animation work now so we could take that image have it off screen tell write some javascript code to say load this web page and after one second uh, of time once the web page is loaded move this image across the screen to this exact position here and it will move it pixel by pixel so we can call this animation right so we can do animation work so let's set this um Let's, let's not worry about that right now. That's probably something we'll look at later in when we look at um, JavaScript. So we'll set it back to left 200. So here it is, left 200. And we're going to put a element at the top and we're going to make that 100 pixels, for example, right? So that should move it down. Now it's overlapping this text here. Yeah? But if we were to remember when we used float, the, the text would wrap around. Can you see it's not wrapping anymore? And regardless of the screen size, that image stays in that exact position. It doesn't care that uh, there's other elements on this page. We're telling it that's where we want it to be. So that's where you will be. That's where you're going to stay right here. So why would we do that? Imagine if this image was much bigger, for example. yeah, And we wanted this text here to be on top of that image. And this could be a background. So it could have like a nice background. You know, sometimes you go to websites and you see background at the top, nice clean background, and it's got some text overlaid on top of it. 
that's what we're doing here in a way, kind of. I'm just showing you it's like a rudimentary example, yeah? But you can see the image sits at the top and the text sits behind it. What if we wanted it the other way around? We would need to put an element in here called the Z index. So it's called Z dash index. And we will set the Z index here to one. And then we've got this text called additional text. So in theory, I'm not quite sure if this is right. I haven't done this for a while, but if we did the uh, Z index two and refresh, nothing happens, right? So we need to set a position relative here as well. And we're doing it in the wrong one, actually. So let's, uh, let's get rid of this. We need to do it in the intro text here. So let's try that here. Okay. Make sure you get it right, because I'll put it in the additional text, and that's something else. We're looking at the intro text here. So let's see if we set the position to relative, and the index to two now the text overlaps it overlays so you can say index one is like imagine the pieces of paper so the first piece of paper that you're going to lay down is going to be the image right this image so we put it on a z, z index one so imagine you've got a piece of paper and you draw a circle on it like this circle example and you put that down on the table you'll say that that is piece of paper number one the z index one then on top of that you get another piece of paper, imagine it's like tracing paper and you write some text and you put that paper on top of the first one, that will be the second piece of paper. So you can see that is the second piece of paper here, the Z index two. And we can stack layers, you can have many Z indexes, right? So you can stack layer on top of layer on top of layer. And sometimes we do that when we want to do animation work as well. Because imagine if we had three or four different images and one image was of the sun and then there was some like meteorite flying across the screen and some, I don't know, some something else happening, like a little rocket ship or something, then we would want to use the Z index to say to the web browser, actually, this particular image is going to be on the bottom layer and this one's going to be on top and another one on top of that and so forth, right? If that makes sense. So Z index is quite useful when you want to stack layers and that allows us to show this text overlapped on top. It's not a very good example here, to be honest, because the, the background is black and the text is blue, so it's clashing a bit, but you should get the understanding of what's going on here. Now, if we change, do you remember we did comments, right? Comments up here. So if we go to here and we do slash open comment, and then we do start and close that comment. Now this is called a comment now, yeah? So this won't actually have any effect. So the image is back here again. So instead of position, we can use a different element. So let's do absolute. And let's see what effect that has, right? So refresh, and we do an absolute position. Now, you can see um, when we use the absolute function or the element, it does something different. Now, basically what is happening is it's saying position this element in its absolute position but it, it kind of get ignored it's, it's ignored by the other elements on the page so when we go to here and we look at this um, this image here it's got an absolute position and the elements that follow it afterwards are ignoring that this has any effect on those elements if that makes sense because if we set it to relative let's just undo that uh, let's do actually we'll just uh, type it right so if we did here Let's compare them. So let's do, uh, in fact, what we'll do to make life a bit quicker, we'll do just to show you what's going on. Because we're going to do a few different ones. So this is absolute. Let's go one up and we'll do relative here. And then we'll put our comment around that. So let's let's comment this absolute for a second, right? So right now we're seeing it as absolute. If I refresh it, now we're seeing it as relative. So relative will actually affect the other um, classes in here and the other div tags that we've laid out. Absolute will do the opposite. So the other elements will ignore that this, um, so we switch it over to, so I'm commenting this one out. If I switch it over to absolute, then the, these other elements are ignoring the fact that this image is positioned in this particular place. 
again if you look at it carefully now if we were to set it i'm going to do a little bit of something a little bit crazy here but if i did 2000 by 2000 and refresh it right now imagine if that was a background image for our text so the text will overlap on top of it and the image will sit in the background you can see how it's overlapping the, all this other content down here it's because uh, the z index is not set on these it's a little bit tricky to explain and we're going to see this working much better in, in future examples when we come to build something a bit more uh, dynamic but understanding absolute position and understanding um, relative is quite important yeah because relative will have an effect on the other elements but absolute will not so we'll leave it as relative for the second and now we can see the effect that it's having because remember we moved it 100 wide, 100 to the right, uh, so 200 to the right and 200 down. That's why we've got this gap here, right? This gap, you can see that 200 to the left and 100 down. That's why that gap is there. So there's one more element that I want to show you. So what we'll do is we'll comment out this relative and we'll copy it and we'll go one up and then we'll get rid of these comments and we'll use the fixed the fixed position position is fixed so when we refresh now and as we scroll look at the image so if i reduce the size of this let's shrink it down so the image is in this fixed position and as i scroll the image will stay there can you see now why would we ever want to do that that looks a bit, a bit bonkers right um a good example of that where we'll use something like a fixed position of an element let's have a look at my website here so as I scroll down this page watch the logo and the phone numbers and stuff it's in a fixed position so you see a lot of websites when you're scrolling down the page if we make this a bit bigger you can see the navigation here now clearly right as I'm scrolling that navigation and look at the footer as well we've got these share options down here and those are in a fixed position so not only the top section but the bottom section are using fixed positions so and then the content in between is scrolling right if that makes sense it should be, it should be logical right so that's quite interesting to see how that element is working on on something that's been designed yeah, from start to end and we'll be building something you know not not on this particular scale but um We'll be making something nice, a nice website later using these techniques. But understanding these techniques is quite important. So today we looked at three types of positioning. We looked at fixed, relative and absolute. And what I would like you to do is go, go away and experiment with this, right? So go and comment. You start using comments as well. Because what you don't really want to do is write this code three different times, delete it and then change it and delete it and change it. You might as well just comment it out. And then you can just simply uncomment something and then refresh it and you can see how it how it affects things right and then you can move it why don't you move it to 400 left and see what happens that like it's moved over here and you can start playing around with it what happens if you set top to what's the opposite of top bottom so if you put bottom in here and refresh it and now it sits up here because it's 100 pixels from its relative position going upwards 100 pixels so imagine we have control of this image now using css we can move it left right up or down and what do you see in games when you're playing games right on your phone or on your computer you, you've got a character or you've got a spaceship or something and that spaceship will move in those those four directions up down left and right um let's try let's just show you one more thing actually that we can probably do today um let's set uh, bottom to top again and what we'll do is we'll set this z index to two and we'll set this one to one and refresh now the image is sitting on top right the image is on top because we set this piece of paper or the z index one the background to the the lowest piece of paper think of it that way it's at the bottom and then we're setting the the um, Z index here to two, so it's a sheet of paper that sits on top, so the image sits on top. But what if we did something like opacity? And we could set this to something like 0 0.5 and refresh. Now the image is see through. 
you can see through it a little bit. So you can actually see the text, but the text isn't as strong as these other elements. So we could set it to like 0 0.2 and refresh, and then it will be even more faded out, right? And sometimes we want to fade images. So we're not actually going into Photoshop or some editing software. We can actually uh, have one image and we may use it in different places and manipulate its opacity depending on what we want to do with that particular image, right? So we have something called opacity as well. That's another way of like having text overlaid, but it isn't true. It isn't true to the word that the text is overlaid. We're just taking this image that's on top and reducing its opacity. So this is not really the correct way to do it, but you should know that opacity is available in case you want to use that later to maybe fade an image in the background, not in actually the foreground. So if we were to set this back to number one, put that at the very bottom and then set this to number two, put that the text on top of it and refresh it doesn't really make much difference but when we use our mouse we can see that we can select the text because it's sitting on top of the image so that's our opacity uh, basically it starts from zero and it goes to one so if we set it to one it will be full opacity the full strength of the image okay there's many other functions as well in CSS to manipulate colors and do loads of different things we've actually looked at colors before right um, so that's the positioning element. That's how you can manipulate the position of a particular element. And it doesn't have to be an image, right? It can be text as well. So I think this was, uh, we've got additional text, we've got intro text, and we've got additional text. So this was the additional text here. So instead of this left float, no, that was, uh, that's the left to here. Instead of this one, we could do something like position relative. So let's go to this additional text. We could do position relative, and then we could do left, uh, let's say 10 pixels only, 10 pixels, and refresh. But we've set this width to 100%, right? Let's try and get rid of this for a second. Maybe that's not enough. Let's give it 20. Okay, it's this text down here that we were um, manipulating. I think all of this was set to intro, right? Before we set all of this to the intro, because it was two paragraphs within that div tag called intro, and this additional text is here. So we could set the the width back to 100. That should be fine. And we this CSS is manipulating this content down here, but you can see we're, we're shifting the content. Uh, 10 pixels to the left or 20 pixels to the left we're indenting it here um, we know we really 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 wouldn't normally do something like that but if you want to add a margin down the side for example so you know when you use Microsoft Word you've got margins down the side and you could use something like this but there's actually better ways to do this I'm going to show you that later there's actually better ways to do like uh, put margins there's actually a function called margin in CSS so we'll use that later so I think let's do a quick tidy up Let's clean things up so that we're, you know, this is looking a bit more presentable. So this left and this relative position for this additional text, we'll delete that for now and refresh. And that will just put our text down here back to as it was. And then um, let's set the, for now, let's set the left to zero and we'll set the top to zero and refresh. And then our image will be back here and we'll leave it like that for the minute. Now you can go away and experiment, play around with it. Um, try and what, maybe a challenge for you is to try and get that image bang in the center of this content here. Try and do that. See if you can get that image to sit right in the middle. Yeah. And then try and get it to stay static. Do you remember we've got the fixed option? Try and do that. So have a little play around um, and see what you can come up with. And then try and leave your code in this particular position. So maybe what you can do um, a little tip for you. So sometimes when you're experimenting with your CSS, yeah, and you're playing around with it, but you want to keep the original content to it, like where you stopped before. So just make a copy. So just go here, make a copy, and just give it instead of calling it copy at the end, give it today's date, which is the 10th or the 11th, 2018. So that'll be like your backup now. So you know you can just go crazy on this CSS, do whatever you want, but you've got an original copy that you can archive and bring back later right all you need to do is just 
maybe you can create a folder in here called archive or something or you just delete this one after you're done with it and then just rename this one back to styles.css and you'll be back to where you was before if that makes sense okay that's about it for positioning um, in the next tutorial maybe we'll look at this margin element I was speaking about because margin is quite a powerful tool as well we use that a lot in, in web development okay let's close this let's close this close this all down and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial